Okay, good morning, folks. Welcome to Now You Know, and um, Katie Willett, who is normally here, is a bit under the weather this morning, but we're hoping Katie gets well soon, and I'm sure she'll be back for the next mm -hmm. program. So, once again, welcome to Now You Know, and we have two very interesting guests this morning, uh, and uh, represent an organization that I've got to tell you we've been remiss in not having on before. Uh, Somerset Woods, and to my immediate right is Jack Gibson, who is the president of Somerset Woods, and you're the, you retired now uh, from Animal yes, Medical I Clinic. Retired okay. veterinarian. Yep. Had been an owner of Animal Medical Clinic and as a veterinarian in, in uh, Skowhegan. And over to the far right is Ernie Hilton, who is a, a lawyer here in Madison. Uh, so welcome, gentlemen. Yeah, and, glad to be uh, here. Yeah, so as I said, you know, we're, we've been remiss in not having Somerset Woods on before, and so that, but in my little study that I did before the show <laughs> and looking at your internet site, uh, it made me realize how many things you guys do and how many properties that you own, and and uh, Jack told me before going on the air that there's like 31 different properties, and that's a lot of properties to to manage. Um, but before we talk about the properties, why don't we talk, uh, would one of you give us a little bit of history here of Somerset Woods? Go ahead, Jack. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> Somerset Woods uh, was probably the very first uh, land trust in the state of Maine. At, at the time it was formed, uh, it was in 1927. And we're a little different than most land trusts is because we uh, were formed by an act of the legislature. And uh, now we have become what is known as a, a land trust, and we're a 501c3 uh, charitable organization. Uh, and for many years, uh, the trust was not very active. Uh, they had a number of properties that were um, donated by the original uh, founders of the organization, Louise Coburn. Uh, there was a, a Weston, a Butler, um, I a Philbrick, Bill Philbrick Sr., who uh, died shortly after I came on the board uh, in 1994, uh, was still an active member of the board at that point in time. So that was kind of neat since he was a founding member in 1927. And that was followed by his son, Bill uh, Philbrick Jr., who was president, and uh, after that, Roger Poulin, and now myself. So we have 90-plus uh, years under our belt. And looking forward forward to our hundredth in nineteen in twenty twenty seven. Uh, most of the original properties were all donated by founding members, uh, and so we have uh, a, a number of really significant properties. We think, and uh, we'll be talking about another one today that we think is big, significant to add. Uh, so we we have a wonderful board, twelve members. It's a very varied board. Uh, we have uh, from People like Ernie and myself, uh, professionals. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, an archaeologist, a uh, teacher, a science teacher who's a uh, main master naturalist. Uh, we have a doctor. We have uh, an uh, forester. A forester. Uh, just a very varied board. And what's nice about our board is they utilize their talents all the time. And I, as president, I have never asked anyone to do something and they have said no they always say yes and that's very nice as a president so i get to delegate <laughs> that's due to that lashing tongue of yours i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> so uh we we uh have a lot now going on and we seem to get support uh from a lot of people they just they know of us and they say, hey, uh, i got a significant property here, and, and I think I'd like to have you guys look at it and see if you can uh, uh, help us out protecting it. And uh, we have a, a, a procedure that we need to go through. There has to be public benefit to accepting any property from an individual because what we do is for the public. Our lands are for public access, recreation, wildlife, that's what we do. And uh, you didn't want to talk about properties now, or I got a couple of examples that 
Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we certainly can get into properties if you want, because there's so many of them that you guys have. And, you know, and, and once again, from, from looking at your uh, website, I mean, you have some really what I call significant properties that really most of the general public in this area know about. They don't necessarily know that Somerset Woods is managing those properties. That, that's true. But they know, I, you know, and... And uh, one of the ones I always think of is, is the gateway into Skowhegan, the woods on the, on the Kennebec River coming in on Route 2, and which has been with Somerset Woods for essentially long, from the, long Essentially long from time. the beginning. Yeah. 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 Uh, Bill Philbrick, who was the clerk of the uh, Kennebec Log Drivers, was kind of instrumental in uh, getting uh, Somerset Woods, <clears throat> the land essentially from Coburn Park, all the way around through to the boat landing, uh, all of which we own, except for a little piece that's owned by the hydro uh, uh, hydro dam operator, uh, about a thousand feet. But there's about a mile, over a mile of frontage there that's uh, accessible to the public. Yeah, and you, uh, you own, of course, that, honestly, I consider that one of the most beautiful gateways into a community in, yeah. in the state of Maine. It's just absolutely gorgeous coming in on, on Route 2 and having the woods around you and the river on one side of you and everything. So you've got that, and then you also you um, own the the picnic area. Picnic area, uh, and your that was leased to the Department of Transportation for a number of years. Yeah, and they gave up uh, maintaining these picnic areas, and so now the businesses in the town of Scott can help uh, uh, supplement whatever fund we have for maintaining that and keeping it uh, keeping it uh, going. So, yeah, because I remember when the DOT decided that they didn't want to maintain that anymore, and of course there was. People going, oh no! I mean, this is really a yeah. a big thing for the community and a lovely picnic area to go to. And and uh, you folks stepped in and what is it the the town and the Department of Conservation is it is involved with that too? Department of Conservation leases the boat landing from us. Oh oh, I'm <clears throat> sorry. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And they actually just rehabbed that about three or four years ago. Okay. Um, so that's a that's a nice, really nice, much much improved uh, boat launch there. Which is right next to right next to right the next picnic, to picnic area. area, and that's now the Cleaver. That's called um, the Cleaver Landing. We call it. Yeah, so Chuck and Doc Cleaver. Chuck, Chuck and Doc Cleaver <clears throat> were pretty prominent. They people were in the community. They lived on the Kennebec River. And were big into mm -hmm. fishing and boating. Yeah, and, and so right forth. there by the History House. Yeah, yeah, yep, wonderful people. They were great friends of the river, and that's why we we named it Cleaver Landing. And yeah. uh, so we're pretty proud, and and the the support that we've had for particularly what we call Kennebec Bank's rest area, the picnic area, yeah. is, is you know, uh, companies like Lynch Landscaping with giving us a wonderful um, price to be our partner and keeping that looking nice, and Skowhegan Savings Bank and Heights Chevrolet and the Town Motel, all the businesses in town and individuals have been wonderful uh, in helping us maintain and keeping that looking nice. We just directed um, uh, uh, the uh, Blue Star Highway yeah. plaque down there Memorial with, with the uh, Women's and Garden Club in, in Skowhegan, uh, as I think Claire is part of that. Yes. And uh, so we were happy to do that. It's right there by Route 2, and it's in a safe spot and mm -hmm. a noticeable spot. So, oh, so. yeah. And, and you own, okay, so you've got the woods area, and you've got the picnic area, and you've got the boat launch there, and you also have uh, the, the Great Eddy island which is just yep. down from there a little bit yeah right in the river there yeah we actually also own a, there's a lot of property that we lease out we the uh the playground uh and the ball field in scott higgin are leased to the town uh those are in, on are, south factory street yeah south the factory street. Quinn and um, uh, amanda berry amanda berry yeah, yeah. and playground. then there's a 50 acre piece right off melbourne's mills road uh that we've leased to the main appalachian trail club they're going to be building a state headquarters there Yes. In the next uh, several years. Uh, it turns out that Skowhegan is about halfway along the distance of the AT from uh, where it comes into Maine to the peak of Mount Katahdin. Yeah. And so, and this was a place where they could do training uh, for trail maintainers and trail builders. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty significant uh, uh, facility. That's, the, that's right. They had announced that. Sorry, I'd forgotten that. But they, uh, they had announced they were going to, to build. There isn't a particular timetable for that other than maybe in the next few years? They perhaps. are in uh, fundraising mode right now and uh, I, th I think they're planning on sometime in the next two or three years breaking ground. So so that's pretty exciting. That's on the, the Malvin. Uh, that's on... Uh, is that a, like 50 acres? Or it's so? about a 50 acre piece yeah. that we leased out to them. Yeah. Okay. 
So, excuse me. There's other. There's another land, uh, the Philbrick uh, Trails land, which is uh, just beyond the sewage treatment plant in Skowhegan, which we uh, lease out to the town of Skowhegan. Um, and uh, south side of the gorge. Yes, yeah, south, south side of, of the gorge. You, you know, know, and I and I think of the 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 uh, the uh, trail that that uh, the town uh, oh, the DB, paved the DB and trail? Uh, DB trail that overlooks the Kennebec River. I'm thinking Beautiful uh, trail. I think of that one, but that's really takes you to the Filbert trails, right? Yes. yes. And so you get on at, at Mount Pleasant Avenue, say or, or near the uh, walking bridge and get onto those trails. I I've, I've walked those trails a few times and they're yep. absolutely yep. Uh, beautiful Enjoying, paved and they've got this Exercise equipment along the way that you can yeah, yeah. use, and and uh, <laughs> the only, I haven't uh, used the exercise equipment, but I've done the walking part. The impetus: uh, we only own 5.6 acres on the south side, which we have leased to the town. But the impetus was for run of the river. Yes, and uh, run of river for the kayak park really needs safe access and egress, yeah. and that 5.6 acres provides that. And so that was the real impetus for us purchasing that, which we we did with uh, uh, a 50% match from the Land for Maine's future. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was very, very nice. I might point out, we've also got uh, some pretty, pretty small passes. We have a, uh, a little piece with a uh, uh, about, what, five or six acres that's got a rare orchid on it uh, that we don't really disclose to the public. We don't want the public to go there. It's kind of protected. And we have another little three or four acre piece that's got uh, what may be a native burial ground on it. Uh, oh, and uh, and that also was kept uh, uh, quiet. Uh, but we but people wanted to have it protected, and so we were the, were the repository for these places. Yeah. What about the you know you got Parsons, uh, Parsons field, field off the Malvin's Mills Road, which which abuts the other Malvin property. It, it actually right? connects with it. Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and I was reading where you're you're making that into a a pollinator area, in other words, growing some plants that right. bees will For bees and pollinate. butterflies and so on. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, we uh, a new initiative here just in the last few weeks is to uh, connect with the art school and uh, perhaps have uh, statuary in that field. I saw uh, that. And, uh, which would be kind of an exciting prospect. Uh, and they've also, uh, the the uh, Main Street Scott Higgins people, there was a recent uh, announcement of getting a $75,000 grant for the the river in fire, river on fire. Yeah, yeah, I saw and, that. And uh, they're looking that. for a place where they can keep those um, I don't know, ornamentation or whatever you call it uh, in during the winter. And uh, we're proposing that they, perhaps they can store them at Parsons Field. So. Now, isn't there supposed to be a trail developed from, I don't know, there's Parsons Field or on the Malvern? Uh, there's uh, already a trail there. There's already a trail. There's already yeah. a trail. You can go from Parsons Field down through uh, what we call Malvern's Woods. Yeah, and it swings back out to Melbourne's Mills Road. And of course, you're right there at the Eddy. Uh, and the, the uh, Water District also has trails on their land, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So there's plenty of trails around. Plenty it. of trails. Yeah. Plenty of trails. Now you've got the 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 uh, big uh, Coburn uh, Coburn Woods land, Coburn Woods land, which is over off uh, well both the Russell Road and uh, the. Uh, River Road going to Norridgewock. Yep. And so we were talking a little bit before we went on air here, and that's like five pieces that have been acquired over the years. And I think Louise Helen Coburn donated the initial piece on she that. Did. Yeah, Louise Coburn was the niece of the Civil War Governor Abner, Abner, Abner Coburn. Coburn, yeah. Coburn. And uh, in fact, the, the drive along Route 2 that we talked about a little while ago, that we call the Governor uh, Coburn uh, Drive. So, yeah. Okay, and you've got a parking lot on the Russell Road side. Correct. Yep. Yep. And I've heard of people cross country skiing on some of the trails that you've you developed. Can, we, uh, one of the more prominent use uses is just year round now is bicycles. Yeah. Uh, there are bike trails, a Central Maine Mountain Biking Club, or I don't know if I got that name right. Apologize if I didn't. But they developed some biking trails out there that. Uh, go very well with the uh, trails we have for skiing and snowshoeing and hiking and uh, the, the snowless times of years. Uh, you can see all kinds of wildlife out there. Uh, birds is a significant vernal pool yep. out there. Okay. Um, so and they call it a significant vernal pool is because it has every life form that a vernal pool can support is wow. there. Oh, I see. So that makes it a significant vernal pool. Do you identify it? Uh, is it on the, uh, the, tr the trail that goes through there? Or? 
Uh, this time of year, you could easily see the pool from one of the trails, yeah. um, but you couldn't identify it as a vernal pool with all this snow. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But when the trees come out, it's harder to find. But uh, it's really you can see it readily on Google Earth if you get on your computer and take mm -hmm. a look. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. So. Now, uh, in terms of winter cross country skiing and that, uh, do you mm -hmm. um, do you uh, have like a snowmobile that drags the trail or does something to open it up or we do not have uh, a snowmobile ourselves uh, We give access to the ITS trail from a neighbor and he runs his snowmobile machine down through our oh, trails. Okay. So that that helps and there's another gentleman on um, Norridgewalk Avenue across from Margaret Trace Smith library that we give access on his snow machine across Taylor Field to the ITS. Okay. And so there are, um, they're not groomed per se strictly for yeah. uh, for cross country skiing, but they are in a sense groomed. You can slide rather than trudge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and those those same trails are used for mountain bikers during the, you know. The during, well, the mountain bikers fall. actually have their own set of trails because the mountain bikers like to have real narrow, confined, um, uh, trails which require a certain amount of real agility to get through, a technical ability, and yeah. uh, if you're our age, they're a little dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking for yourself, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm still a young guy. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that, so obviously, you know, one of the goals here is to provide some recreational opportunities oh, it's all, for yeah. citizens of the communities. Around. Ecological uh, interests and, and uh, recreation. That's what we're yeah. all about. Yeah. 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 Wildlife. And there's another parcel right on the on the <clears throat> river road as as well, right? Um, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Well, on the uh, we were talking about the East River Road. Ah, uh, I was thinking there's the River Road, but maybe I've. You, you're talking about Taylor Field, across from Margaret Chase Smith Library. River Road between Skyhook and Norwich Walk, mm -hmm. or yeah, wasn't there a Tate? Is it Tate? Probably. What am I K, thinking of? Um, K Taylor. That's K Taylor, Taylor Field. Yeah. Okay. K, K Taylor. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's the one that's 22 acre field uh, right across from Margaret Chase Smith Library. There's access oh, okay. there. There's access. We have a sign. So, you know, you can uh, put yeah. those big snow banks now. It's one of the diamond shaped signs has, a, has our logo on it. There you go. Okay. So, sorry, I, you, know, you have so many properties. I was trying to keep it all straight <laughs> yeah. as to what you had. And, uh, and we've talked a lot about the, the, scout, the immediate Scowhegan properties, but you have a lot. Upstate, uh, up county as well. Well, our furthest property north w is in Carrying Place Town yes. Township. Well, oh, that's and, an easement, and it's an easement. That's that's true. That is an easement, and but it's a very unique property. It has eskers on it and little uh, uh, trout ponds on it, and so so that is an easement. I guess the furthest north okay. property we own mountain. would be. The young, what we call young preserve on Fletcher Mountain in well, Concord. Concord. That's a that what, two hundred yeah. and some odd acres. Yeah, two hundred yeah. acres. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and then we own uh, islands in the river and Solon. That's yes. That's Townsend Preserve after Bill Townsend, who was a former board member and probably throughout his life one of the foremost conservationists the state of Maine has ever yeah. produced. Oh yeah, amazing. And those are thirty-acre islands that are. Uh, contiguous to each other, and uh, then we own what, what we call Thompson Island further downriver in Madison, and it's got wonderful river access. Uh, uh, I met a family there one year that uh, they go down there and swim in the river. That's kind of a little back channel there that's safe for yeah. for younger children, and uh, so that was kind of nice. And got a hand carry, uh, yeah. hand carry yeah. launch site there for canoes. Yeah. So yeah. you could go out and have a little picnic on some of these islands. You then? could absolutely you could. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, you know, for sure. That's nice. Do they have any significant types of, of woods or or uh, plant growth? Well, or? they 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 are pretty much. I think most of them would be what uh, would be called a silver maple floodplain forest, and so yes. that silver maple obviously are a predominant tree. But there uh, there were would be ash trees and and some pine if it's high enough, some hemlock, uh, maple oak. Uh, there are on some of the islands, of course the islands are, have a lot of fiddleheads, you know, yeah. there'll be a lot of fiddleheads out, the out there. And some of them have uh, uh, wild garlic and wild leeks. 
people tend to know where the fiddleheads are too. They do. Yeah, they find out about that. Well, especially I, I know in got, times. Where I live out on the Bigelow Hill Road, there are certain pockets where the fiddleheads go <laughs> really well. And by God, if you're not out there quick, there's going to be somebody taking all the yeah. fiddleheads. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. 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 And I love fiddleheads. I don't yeah. know about you folks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We do. Yeah. Well, you've got, as I um, said, you've got many, so many significant problems. How do you. How do you get most of the properties you got? I mean, some are, are, are grants, some are... Most have uh, been by donation. By pure donation. Right. Uh, we have, we Right now, we have in Madison a major acquisition we're going to be going about. Yes, yes, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, I don't know whether you want to break into that subject right now. Just mention the Al Jackson Woods, just for interest. Uh, how we yeah, got, how uh, we got a, that. A, 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 a fellow, Alfred Jackson, uh, was in my office one day, and he, was, uh, he had some 200 acres that he was looking to... He didn't want to see it cut up. And he wanted to uh, see it preserved in some fashion, and uh, we recognize it as having pretty significant uh, ecological value. Uh, they, we did a screening on a little brook that runs through it. It's got brook trout all through it. Uh, and where's uh, that located? That's on the East Madison Road. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sort of right across from the art school, and if you sort of know where that. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, so that's. That's a, that was 200 acres, and he is, uh, and he, he donated that to us, uh, and he is just happy as a lot that, that he's done that, of just knowing that it's going to be preserved, because he and his wife, Dassey, uh, bought that land, oh, maybe back in the 60s or so, and uh, they, uh, they've they treated it very lightly and very respectfully, and they wanted to make sure it was going to be, uh, continue to be treated that way, so... So that's been a that was a nice little acquisition. So for a lot us. of these are gifts, and uh, people just wanting to see that the land is taken care of. Yeah. And, we, and can, we can't take all gifts because some of them don't have ecological or recreational value. But if they do have value, then we then we take them. Okay. We, we are willing to accept them. So you've been offered perhaps things in the past that you looked at it and said, well, you yeah, know, probably not. Not a lot, not but there are. There was a there was a just a small plot, literally in downtown Skowhegan that. Uh, you know, it was enough to be taxed every year, but it, there was no, you couldn't access it, there was nothing you could do with it, and so we wouldn't accept that. I mean, that's just, you know, uh, something like that. It has to have public benefit. So you, you, you know, and, and once again, we remarked about this before we went on the air, I was on the board a number of years ago, and we used to, we did a fair number of things, but nothing like you guys have been doing in the past ten to yeah. ten to fifteen years. You really expanded your holdings since I I have been there, and and uh, yeah. um, and it's absolutely amazing what you've done. Yeah. And I think probably because you've been uh, more aggressive than 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 our group was in the past, people are are hearing about you, and then more likely to somebody pick up the phone and say, "Hey, Jack or Ernie, we got this parcel. We want to take a look at it." Well, I don't know about aggressive, but I think we've been, really been trying to get ourselves out there so that people see us. Mar yeah. Marketing. Marketing, we, we, yeah. We've tried to signage and... Yeah, some signage, just letting people know that we're there. Because they, yeah. uh, otherwise, uh, I mean, sometimes, in fact, we'd see, you might see a sign for Somerset Woods Trustees, but they'd, you know, what is, what is that, you know? And yeah. so we've developed a web page and just kind of made ourselves known. Because in, in the leasing of our properties to the town helped a lot to the town of Skowhegan and... and and just uh, trying to make ourselves known in the communities. And you've better. certainly got some press, I think. I, I'm yeah. thinking about Parsons Field, and I yeah. know when you you have uh, the annual cookouts at the picnic area, you usually yeah. hear about that. And and uh, certainly, and, and maybe it's the time to get into this now, that with the western woods and water here in Madison, um, you've, yes. there's been a fair amount of publicity about that because of its significance. Do you want to get into that? Because, you know, this is a good sized piece, this Western Woods piece. It's what, 275 acres. Yes. And you have an option on it, right? So you've got to come up with money. So we might as well do the pitch here on this show and see what we can do. <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and do the history in the. Well, I'll do a little bit of history. Yeah, sure. Um, the, the, Western pro the Westons were actually uh, nearly the first settlers in the town of Madison. There was a Joseph Weston who actually was the first settler in Skowhegan. He actually helped uh, Benedict Arnold uh, uh, get his uh, bateau up over the falls. And uh, his son, Deacon Ben, uh, came up into Madison uh, and uh, settled. And that land that he settled on is what uh, is a portion of what is for sale now. The Western family became quite prosperous. 
Uh, they picked up a fair amount of ground over the years, and they were really instrumental in the development, economic and business industrial development of Madison. I mean, hugely uh, involved. So, um, again, I had some clients, uh, people, people I knew, friends of mine that I'd known for a number of years, and I'm going to just show you a photo here. Uh, one fellow uh, donated to us a, uh, well, actually between two people, they donated to us an easement and then also about a mile of river frontage so that we actually, uh, we, there's actually a public access trail now from right down pretty much on Main Street in Madison all the way up around through along the Kennebec River up to where it intersects with Western Avenue again. Th that can, th and you can imagine it is incredibly rare to have that kind of public access on a major river in any town anywhere. Absolutely. Uh, we had that in the Governor Coburn Drive in Skowhegan. Uh, uh, and we wanted to make sure we tried to replicate that in Madison because this is a this is going to be a public legacy for the next you know 100 150 years. Now we're looking to try to acquire what is Western Woods, and I've got another photo here, which is essentially this is a peninsula. This is Western Island, which is already subject to a conservation easement to the Department of Conservation that was owned by Madison Paper. Here's Route 43 right down here. And here's Western Avenue right over here on this side. Everything that you see in green going all the way down through here to Western to Route 43 is essentially what is for sale. It includes another mile of river frontage. These fields have got a conservation easement on them, and so they are also have a degree of public access. So when you combine that with what we already have, you're talking about upwards of four miles of Kennebec River frontage which would be uh, plus all the miles of inland trails, which are essentially just uh, tow roads and skidder tracks, which can be worked on and uh, recreated into uh, uh, recreational trails. So um, Western, uh, this Western Woods property, 275 acres, uh, is uh, got a price tag of $450,000 on it. Okay. Uh, at this point, we have raised Two hundred and fourteen thousand. Two hundred fourteen thousand dollars. Okay. Do you have yeah. any matching grants or anything with this? We, we do, uh, and we've already matched those. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. But we may come up with some more. Uh, <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> and and how long is the option? Uh, good well, for? the option expires. Uh, the Western Homestead uh, Cor Farm Corporation um, is the just a family corporation of uh, some number of owners, uh, family members, and uh, they've given us until December 31st of this year, 2019. Okay. And so we need to close before then, and we are determined to do so. Okay. Uh, because this is such an incredible legacy project for the town of Madison and for the entire region. Uh, I might point out that uh, the Pan Am Railways, which is, which is Main Central, <coughs> Uh, has stopped using their line from uh, Oakland uh, all the way up into Madison. Uh, and of course, it was it had not been used from Madison all the way up into Bingham for quite a few years. Sure. Uh, that portion of the rail bed from uh, really, uh, I suppose, North Anson uh, itself up through is already a snowmobile trail, a recreational trail, yeah. informally or formally. So uh, Pan Am is going to be uh, implementing uh, a... Uh, an actual formal uh, abandonment of that track with a federal railroad authority, which is kind of an expensive process, I understand. Uh, hopefully soon, uh, the state of Maine is already negotiating with the uh, with Pan Am to acquire that trackage, that that right of way from Oakland all the way up through, including the trestles. And this these trails we're talking about here would be would tie right into that track. Uh, so people could bicycle all the way from Oakland all the way up through. Well, that's fabulous. I have I have done that <clears throat> North Anson Solon uh, years ago on a on a bike, and it's absolutely wonderful. Well, that's probably uh, Solon to Bingham. Solon to Bingham. I'm Solon sorry. To Bingham. Yep, yes. Solon to Bingham. Oh, yeah, yeah. They are wonderful. Yeah, absolutely wonderful trail. Yeah. And uh, now to potentially bring that all the way down from Bingham to all the way to Oakland. All the way to Oakland uh, is amazing. 
Now our trails are non-motorized. Uh, this winter, <clears throat> along this track right along from the Nathan Street boat landing all the way up through here, uh, the Abnaki S uh, Snow Riders Snowmobile Club very graciously uh, groomed that trail for us uh, to make it better for skiing and snowshoeing and whatever else. And it was very actively used by people in and around Madison. In fact, we had some folks from Skowhegan come up and use it. So, well, didn't you have uh, uh, kind of a I don't know whether it was an open house or whatever? You had uh, invited public members to go out onto the property and yes back in yeah. September we did yeah yeah yeah, yeah. We well attended yeah. well yeah. we had one in what February too we had, uh, we had one a in February of, yeah. uh, trail uh, people snowshoed from downtown Madison out Main to Street. the Weston farm and then some people went out snowshoeing from the Weston farm out on the property and we had just a little get together with some hot chocolate and uh, coffee and donuts or whatever it was there yeah. I mean, cookies I guess it was yeah, yeah. Um, but um, Is it? this will protect, I need to throw this in here, but there, there is a ITS snowmobile trail that crosses the western property, and this will protect that section of trail. Um, we will keep that open for snow machines, even though the rest of our trails will probably be non-motorized. That section will be protected for snowmobiles. And I might point out that for snowmobiles in particular, Getting access across this land to get down to the trestle when it is officially a snowmobile uh, access across the river will be key to, well, access to the west side of the Kennebec River for, I don't know, from where to where. I'm, uh, I yeah. guess, uh, well, I guess. Well, it all we'll, connects. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. if there's a, huge, a long stretch of the Kennebec River that you can't get across. Yes. Except yeah. you want, if, right. Unless you want to venture on ice, you know, yeah. which is kind of a treacherous operation. So yeah. when I think of the, and, and this will give you what a couple, at least a couple miles on the on the Kennebec River. Um, oh, uh, about two and a half miles. Two and a half miles. You yeah. think about that, and, oh. and uh, you know, if you were a little farther south in more urban areas, can you imagine what the cost of the property would be? Well, what they'd be doing, they'd be subdividing it out into yeah. lots well, and, and yeah. selling it for big money, yeah. really. And that and that's the threat to this property. This this is very developable. This is an esker that runs down through the spine of this property. And uh, eskers, as you may or may not know, uh, are basically uh, ridges gravel. of gravel. And they're very, very buildable or mineable. Uh, and so, you know, from mining and uh, somebody clear-cutting this property or developing it with uh, a housing development. It's very developable. The Weston family does not want to see it develop. That's why they are really trying to find a conservation buyer. And uh, we think it's important enough. Uh, $450,000 is a lot of money, um, but we think it's worth it. And uh, we've made a good start on it. And well, as Ernie says, we fully intend to uh, own this property next year. So you have two hundred and fourteen thousand now, right? Towards the <clears throat> four fifty. You got to do the the rest by the end of yep. this year, two thousand nineteen. Right. So what are some of the fundraising techniques you're? Well, using? we're going to be hitting, hitting you're me. You're going to hit hitting me up. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that won't get you a long ways towards the goal, but uh, uh. well, it's it's just basic fundraising. Uh, I've done a lot of it, and, and uh, our executive director, Nancy Williams, uh, is great at uh, uh, filling out uh, okay. applications, and right. Ernie and Gwen Hilton. Uh, there's one uh, important fund we did not get last year, we we're going to reapply this year, was the Community Forest Program by the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, but that's not the only one. The Maine Natural Resources Conservation Program, I think it's called, that. Uh, we'll have money available, so and uh, and we hope that the uh, legislature will uh, refund the land for Maine's future. And, yes, and there's certainly we, been talk about that now. Right, and yeah. and we had actually been uh, granted one hundred and twelve thousand five hundred dollars four or five or six years ago, whatever it was, when we uh, yeah. made the first go around on trying to purchase this. That was when Governor LePage would not release conservation funds, so that fell through. But uh, so there's there's three sources right there that we hope for a significant grant to bump us up closer to that goal. But otherwise, it's just uh, uh, applying Skowhegan Savings Bank, Bangor Savings, businesses, individuals in the area, 
some people have been, have been very generous. Our board has been very generous, uh, which was really uh, a, a really good start uh, to do this. And but we've had help from the Maine Community Foundation. That's where a couple of matching grants have come through. So uh, uh, we're pretty happy to be where we are right now. Are you going to hold any more formal fundraisers or maybe more events out on the property? Or Oh, we have all kinds of events uh, uh, we have in mind for the property, believe me. I mean, just all kinds of rec recreational aspects. And actually, I might make note that there is a f we have a Facebook page for it. It's called uh, Western uh, Woods Ampersand Waters, W-E-S-T-O-N, Western Woods and Waters. And uh, just uh, apply to be a member, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'm, I'm one of the administrators, and I'll just... Uh, Say yes, uh, so you can find out there all about all of our activities. Uh, people post photos of there's been school groups of school kids out snowshoeing and skiing and uh, and uh, having a great time. Um, but uh, we have a. Uh, it turns out that Steve Burns now owns the old uh, 1817 Homestead House, uh, which is on the Federal Register. Attached to it is an old schoolhouse. The Westerns actually had their own school building. It still has its old desks with slates, individual slates. And uh, he has made that available to us. Uh, we're going to have a vernal pool walk this spring. And uh, afterwards, we're going to meet in the schoolhouse for a little lecture. Uh, talking oh, nice. about vernal, vernal, <clears throat> vernal pool type stuff, you know, with an herpetologist. Uh, later on, uh, we have an Audubon uh, bird trip, birding trip, and we're going to be doing the same thing. Steve has indicated he'd like to see the house made available to the public uh, for, you know, limited events. Yeah. Uh, so it would be, uh, and you're all invited. Uh, so, <laughs> we don't have a date yeah. yet, do we? We don't have a date, no. not yeah. yet. But yeah. it'll be on that Facebook page. And these, are, these events aren't uh, fundraising events, no. per se. Okay. They, they are more marketing us marketing the property, get letting people know what's there and what is available, you know. And, you know, obviously we hope that that uh, translates so, into people. If somebody that, wanted to write a check while they were there, you probably wouldn't turn it down. I no. wouldn't turn it down. <laughs> uh, so, you and you're probably sending out, as a matter of fact, I've seen them, I think I've seen these, you're sending out fundraising letters to uh, to people too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're doing those uh kind of a, a little at a time, you yeah. know, so we can keep going down, you know, send some out, meet with people, hopefully have them become supporters of this uh, project. And uh, so they're going out a little at a, at a time, so don't feel offended if you haven't gotten one yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So it's coming anyways. So this is kind of like an all-consuming thing for you guys right now, I think, is to try it to It is get for this. me. Yeah. Uh, I've been uh, I've been getting up there, and uh, actually, Eric Lottie, another fellow, and I spent a day out there with a chainsaw, kind of clearing trail and moving things around and, and trying to make it more amenable to public use uh, on this uh, Riverside Trail I, I was showing you. Um, I think there's going to be a lot more of those kinds of days coming up. Uh, we're going to be... Uh, uh, bush hogging. There's a little section of field in through there that we'll be uh, kind of clearing off, and uh, so just trying to make this thing as uh, adaptable to public use. Yeah. And I might point out that the gift of this riverside area, about a mile of frontage, was not just the frontage; it was uh, 250 feet back from the river. So it's a it's a good sized strip of land, which can be made available for public use. You know, anytime, anytime in the future, and it, as with climate change and other kinds of uh, cultural dynamics, demographic dynamics, it could very well be that Madison becomes, just like almost a lot of central Maine, it may be the refuge for a lot of people moving into this area. So, well, yeah, and, 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 and actually that's a good point. I mean, uh, I think lifestyle, I think a lot of people that do move into yeah. this area, they're looking at a, I would assume, a recreational yeah. lifestyle. Some it's, outlets. It's, it's not yeah. necessarily the place where you're gonna make the most money in the, in the country, but it's certainly a place that affords a good recreational lifestyle, a good yeah. way of life, I think. Yeah. And if, and I would think towns in the county could take, you know, these, like these pieces of land and this and, and make that part of a promotion of we've got a better way of life right. or the way life should be or something like that. Yeah. Part of Maine. So yeah. it's, it's certainly. Yeah, we, we, we. We think this is going to help Madison in the area in many ways, and, and uh, 
lifestyle one of them, but I was just talking with Dean Olmsted from Rennie's, and uh, uh, he mentioned how many people on their way to Sugarloaf stop and shop at Rennie's. You know? Oh my, yeah. Well, you know, maybe yeah. this will become a place people will stop and ski, and, and wouldn't it be nice if uh, a place like the old Oasis restaurant reopened again so you could get a, yeah. get a meal while you're, you're accessing these trails and, yeah. and so on and, and, and start to get a name. So hopefully it'll have an economic component down the road and educational, getting more kids on these trails, healthy lifestyles, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, uh, and not to mention wildlife. I mean, 275 acres with wonderful riparian habit habitat mm -hmm. in, a, in a section of the Kennebec River that has already been designated as significant in the Kennebec River Valley by the uh, Department of uh, Conservation or Inland and Fisheries IFNW, and Wildlife, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. IFNW. So, you know, there's, there's just uh, uh, so many reasons that we, we uh, intend to complete this. Well, yeah, and, I, and, and talk about economic development. I would, I would think this really could lead to economic development, and you could kind of tie all this stuff in together because if you, if you have, I'm sure when, when people are looking at uh, areas to live in, they're looking at not only can I get a job, but how is my lifestyle going to be and can I do outdoor activities and things like that and literally in in Madison particularly with the Western Woods and Water Project and, and in Skowhegan with all the things and immediately accessible to the downtown yeah. area Absolutely. that'd be kind of nice I mean you work and work in downtown Skowhegan and then you can go out and walk the you know the, the yeah. gorge trail or yeah, you know, do whatever yeah. or here you can just and, uh, Get on your bicycle with your kids and just go out and have a picnic somewhere along the river, you know, in a totally impromptu situation, you know. I mean, yeah. just the, the possibilities are absolutely endless, you know, for just really re a relaxed lifestyle. Do you tie into some of the economic development organizations at all? I would think both the Somerset Economic Development, say Skowhegan Economic Development, would, would be wanting to promote this and attracting business we, to the area? We haven't. Uh, really actively been engaged in that manner with the local organizations but just before this meeting today I received an invitation to speak to the Madison Business Alliance okay and yeah. either in April or May I'm going to be uh, meeting with those folks uh, a person that I sol solicited uh, thought that the business owners of this area should hear about this project absolutely and so we uh, we will be doing that um, but uh, this, the um, Skowhegan area, we really haven't engaged with anybody no. on that. that uh, Been too busy doing other things, I guess. Most, well, yeah, I would, I would say. The most direct economic development, I think, that this organization has ever been uh, a part of it will be the main Appalachian Trail Club facility in Skowhegan on what we call Melbourne's Woods. I think it's around a $2 million dollar facility yeah it's yeah. a it's a garage a meeting area there's six cottages for uh, the trail crews to stay in some of these poor kids uh, in the summer literally sleep in tents all summer uh, while they're working on the trail so they are really trying very hard to have a permanent facility where these kids can um, uh, stay and learn and uh, so on you know with bath facilities and in the kitchen facilities and yeah. Well, you think it would be a coup for Skowhegan having this Appalachian Trail uh, major oh. building there and, and, and people coming into the community for that that would have yeah. some spin-off effects to, the, to yeah. the town, one would think. Yeah, yeah. See, I kind of I look at this kind of globally and say, look, you know, yeah. conservation is certainly a very important part, but how, how can we tie that in maybe to yeah. economic development for this area as well? And I think they all kind of... Oh, they absolutely do. Going absolutely to the, do. Yep. going together. So I just wondered eventually yep. whether they could all kind of work together and mm -hmm. make it all uh, make us make it a real good place here. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I agree with you. Absolutely. Yeah. So what do you see for the for the future of the organization? I said you guys have been going great well, guns. You know, I think it, in well, recent years. Well, we we have been going great guns, and and uh, I actually confided uh, we had our. Uh, uh, bi-monthly, semi-monthly, bi-month, semi-monthly board every meeting. Month, every other month. Uh, every other month. So we had that yesterday. And uh, I confided to one of the board members that uh, our success worries me a little bit. 
<laughs> because uh, there's a, uh, you know, we have responsibility to take care of these public lands. So they, that's what they are. We may be a private entity, but they're public lands. And we have a responsibility to take care of those and all that means. And so uh, that's going to take money mm -hmm. and that's going to take further support from you, the public. And, uh, uh, you know, for we have a half-time executive director. That's our major expense right now in, in a given year. Administrative uh, expense, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, uh, probably close to half our budget. Mm -hmm. um, but in future years, we're going to need a full-time executive yeah. director. Yeah. We're going to need a land steward. Right now, all our stewards are our board members, advisory board members, uh, and a few volunteers. So all of those those expenses that we don't pay for now are, you know, that's because of the generosity of people's time. And uh, we've gotten enough donations of land and properties in the last few years that it's starting to concern me that we're going to have to be a little more aggressive on uh, funding for general operations. Well, you know, when I, when I, sat down, as I told you, when I was reviewing your website and the properties, and I said, holy, wow, this is amazing. I mean, they've got yeah. a lot more than I thought they did. Yeah. And it kind of, and of course, you've got a volunteer board and advisory council and a part-time executive director. And I said, boy, have you created a monster here? I mean, you've really got a lot of stuff. And it, it, it kind of seemed to me at some point that you may have to expand what you do. You could have a, a full-time person just, uh, just managing this property right I here. would say. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, because if you're going to be stewards of the land, obviously you've got Depending to Depending on how maintain. much use you got, you know, and, and how much, how many people started biking, and you got, if you had any kind of like erosion issues, these sorts of things, you get a lot of, or or a lot of, uh, depending on how we decide to use it, you know, but if you had some camping and that sort of thing that, was, that wasn't that was really appropriate, then you'd have to kind of do, you know, some police work, you know, really just uh, yeah. dealing with the public. Uh, Making sure it's going to be available for everybody on as broad a basis as possible, but without harming the property. You know, because there's only so much you can do with volunteers, and you sound, it sounds as though you have very active, and very concerned volunteers we do. in your organization. But uh, with all the properties and the acreage that you have and the maintenance uh, involved, it sounds to me as though you might have to expand a bit in the future. You know, well, I, th I think we will. I think that's inevitable. I mean, uh, uh, we unfortunately. As far as members of Somerset Woods trustees go, uh, our charter legislation in 1927 stipulated they would only be 12 members of Somerset Woods trustees, and they all, you may remember this, yes. and they all will be trustees. directors, trustees. Right. And so we're not a typical membership organization. Uh, you know, now we've uh, got an advisory board, and, and we ask people to be supporting members, uh, but they're, they're really not... Uh, uh, a strict member, I guess, in the truest sense of Somerset Woods trustees. Yeah. But I, 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 I think, yes, very definitely. I mean, I grew up in Maine, Ernie did, I don't know if you did, Chris, did or too. not, but, uh, you know, we've all seen in our lifetimes very important properties become developed and lost to public access. Yes. And whether you hunt or you fish or you hike or it doesn't matter. Especially uh, river access. Yeah, and, we, know, we all access. see it go, disappear. And uh, so we're trying to uh, do all we can to see that some of those parcels don't disappear for the public. So our focus really is on, on uh, streamside, riverside properties, quite frankly, generally speaking. Because that's, uh, I, I actually worked on the log drives back in the 70s, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people won't remember this, or weren't, weren't, certainly weren't here at the time, but in some ways, those pulp drives coming down the river Although there was maybe there might have been some ecological damage in a lot of ways, uh, they they were the salvation of the river because people chose not to build streamside on these rivers, yes. because there's all the pulp there and they're wiping out the docks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, then when the pulp drive stopped, of course, shoreland zoning came into effect, you know, which kind of stopped a lot of the development that might have otherwise taken place. But so we still have a relatively uh, clean riversides in terms of development. If you go into states in the mid-Atlantic, say Pennsylvania, where I lived for a number of years, every stream, every river has got, you know, every every quarter mile, or every I should say every couple hundred feet, there's a cabin, cabin. Oh, cabin, absolutely. Cabin, 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 you know, just like that, and just endless. And so we don't have that here. And so if you, 
as it is now, if you put in the river in Solon, and you head down to North Anson, or even down here by Western Island, there are very few places that you're going to see on the way down through. I mean, you're, it's it's not really all that much different than it was back when Benedict Island went up through in uh, in uh, 1775. Yeah, it, yeah, that's interesting because yeah, I think you're right with the with yeah. the logs that that kind of postponed any yeah. shore shoreline development. And I would add pollution to that. Yeah, not yeah. just the logs. I mean, you know, uh, just. They were open sewers, you know. Yeah. Oh, that too. And so, that too. You know, nobody oh, wanted an open sewer in their front yard. Oh God, yeah. we were draining stuff right into the Kennebec yeah. River. I know in Skowhegan, Madison, you yeah. know, all doing that back then. And now the river is cleaned up unbelievably. Oh, yeah. uh, and yeah. you can swim and fish and yeah. and so forth. And actually, very productive fishing yeah. Yeah. in yeah. the Kennebec River now. Uh, so yeah, I think that that certainly delayed the development, and even now, you know, and now I'm talking from a real estate perspective. I mean, property on the river still really doesn't yeah. cost you as much as property a, co a comparable size property on a lake. Yeah, yeah, you would pay a lot more for that. And the interesting thing, you look at some of the parts of the Kennebec River. You know, it's almost like being on a lake in terms of the the uh, how how far it is across from one bank to another oh, yeah. in a lot of areas of the river the flow isn't you know dead, all that fast yep. fairly dead water yep. um it probably should be yep. uh value wise yep. comparable to what a lake but it still isn't yeah and um but from your perspective and western woods and That's so forth, it's it's allowed you to conserve some property where it may have been situation. totally unaffordable before yeah right yeah so that part is good. Yeah. yeah, that part is good, and the river is good. And, and do you think there's still a uh, a maybe an uh, an attitude that the river isn't as clean? Do you think there still seems to be that? I don't know. I perception. I don't think so anymore. I, I'm the Solon section where where Town Townsend Preserve is Indian and Fowl Meadow Island. That's Class A water now, so you can right out of the river you can do everything except drink it. Yeah, uh, you know. So that that's. That's pretty clean water, and uh, I'm not sure about the Madison to um, North, Anson. North Anson stretch, I, I, where it comes down into the impoundment. Generally, that lowers water quality when you get down to impoundment. And I know the uh, Madison to Skowhegan, I know that's a Class B water, which is a little less clean, but still it's, it's pretty clean. Yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think people have the reservations about swimming in the river anymore certainly they should you can swim safely in the river yeah uh, anywhere in central maine now uh, which is is very nice so that is good but even as i said in terms of property values it still isn't quite right. yeah, you right. same as being on a lake here in, you're right in maine yeah you're right. everyone wants to be in a lake and my god you know it's probably a lot of those lakes that aren't nearly as clean as that river is really well that's true uh one one other thing that i think has prevented development besides the log drive and pollution is that a lot of the river banks are, are, are pretty steep and pretty True. high, True. so you don't have good access. And so it's really nice for us to have a place like Thompson Island where you literally can drive to the river bank and be just four or five feet over the level of the water, if that. You know? yeah, if, you know, I'd and, say, and, I was going to say maybe just a couple still, feet. Yeah, it's yeah, just wonderful walk right down very easily. on and off. You know, yeah. It's nice. And, of course, there used to be river access at the... What, the I've traditionally called the boom house uh, for a takeout point on the river on uh, on the river road, uh, and that was lost. And about the same time, we acquired Thompson right. Island again as a gift, as a donation. You know, and it was it's only like uh, it's only like 15 acres, but yep. it includes an island, and there's a big bogan that comes into it, so it forms kind of a, a peninsula. And this, I think, there's almost 4,000 feet of river frontage, including the island, on this one parcel. Yeah. You know, so, uh, but again, a lot of it's floodplain, so, you know, you can't build right on the river, but, uh, uh, but it, you know, when the water goes down, it's wonderful access for the public. But you folks own some really, what I would call, very significant properties in, in Somerset mm. County, as I, it probably been enjoyed, uh, at least visually, anyways, by an awful lot of people here in the area, and uh, probably a lot of them didn't realize that Somerset Woods had anything to do with it. Um, well, we weren't even putting signs on our properties until not too many years ago. No, that's, that's true. You know, that's not, true. Not, not for any particular reason that we weren't. We just 
weren't even thinking about it. Yeah. You know, and uh, now we uh, then we started thinking yeah. about you know maybe we ought to, we should let people know that we own these properties and uh, and make sure that they know that they have access to them. For, for yes. most for most of our history, we've been a, a, a terrible organization at marketing. it. Yes. You know, uh, yeah. As you know, as you, I as do, a former yeah. board member, I, we just have been terrible at it. But we have realized that, and hopefully we've turned a corner. I mean, at our meeting yesterday, we just authorized uh, uh, purchasing uh, quite a few more signs, and we will get them up on, on our properties to let people know they are there, they're for you, and uh, please use them. Absolutely. And uh, once again, it, 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 uh, it would make people not only realize that you own them, but may uh, put you more in people's mind in terms of whether or not they may want it donate or sell properties yep. to you in the future yep. so yep. Uh, that would be nice so or, or donate to fund our operations <laughs> uh, yes yes that too that's right that's right absolutely absolutely now you folks are a 501c3 which yeah, means yeah. that a donation you can write off your taxes yeah um, so that certainly is good so any of you folks that want to uh, Donate to uh, the Western Woods uh, project. That is a tax deduction for you. It is. As well as uh, just being a generous thing on your part. It's a good uh, idea. Yeah, absolutely. So we all look at that angle, too. <laughs> yes, yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. Making donations <laughs> yeah. and so forth. Well, we're getting towards the end of the show. Do you guys have any closing remarks that you want to make? Or, or once again, it'll give me maybe enlighten us a little bit to any future things you're considering? Uh, I would suggest two things on the part of the public. I would suggest the Western Woods. One is to uh, sign up, go on Facebook, if you're on Facebook, and go to the Western, W-E-S-T-O-N, Woods Ampersand Waters Facebook page, and uh, just uh, uh, just put, check a little mark there, and it'll and, uh, indicate you want to be uh, on the group. It's an open group. And uh, one of the administrators will uh, say, absolutely. And the other thing I'd strongly advise is uh, go up on Madison Street in North Anson to the boat launch, launch your canoe, uh, borrow one from us if you want, and take a river trip from North Anson down the Kennebec and just visit this little area here between Western Island and this peninsula. And it is a, just a lovely, lovely location. It's very quiet. It's all backwater from the dam. Uh, go in some of these Logans in here uh, on the island itself and just explore the areas where the Western family uh, enjoyed and farmed uh, and did their business for, you know, probably a couple hundred years. So, and uh, just, uh, it's a kind of a spiritual situation, spiritual experience. So, I yeah. would add to that, not just the Western Woods and Waters uh, Facebook page, but uh, we have our Somerset Woods Trustees Facebook page. and. That will show you all of our properties, uh, and uh, has pictures on there, and uh, you can familiarize yourself with uh, what we own and what is there for you, and uh, and go from there. And we hope you get out and enjoy our properties. Well, thank you uh, this morning to both uh, Jack Gibson and Ernie yeah. Hilton. Uh, it, was, it was great having both of you on the show this morning, and and. Uh, now you know a little bit about Somerset Woods. <laughs> so, now you know.